you've got your Bible, I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Then I want you, once you find that, I want you to find, how are you? I'm sorry, I just, I, I, beach ball moment, it just happens. Okay, anyway, <clears throat> then I need you to find John 5, and I need you to have both places ready to go, okay? <clears throat> so let me tell you, we have been going through this book of John. Last week we talked about understanding new creation mentality. What it is to be a new creation. We discovered something. Guess what? New creation doesn't start at death. New creation doesn't start when we see our new bodies in the whenever God decides to come back. New creation starts when we accept the Lord. We are living in new creation, and we need to walk in new creation, right? We need to have this. And, we're, and, 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 and so this is what we talked about. That um, the real thing about uh, new creation is really recreation. Remember we talked about that? Which is closely understood with resurrection. You see, I'm going to give you a little secret. I can tell you what God's mission is for our world. He is determined to set everything back to right again. Come on, isn't that exciting? He wants to take anything that's wrong and he wants to make it right. That's his mission. That's his goal. And, and he uses us and he uses other things. So that's kind of where we, where we were. So we're living in a new creation and a resurrected life. So I want you to look at 2 Corinthians 5. As we begin this conversation, I want to start here. Now, I'm a, I'm a guy who likes numbers. Right? And I want you to notice that it's 2 Corinthians 5 and John 5. Coincidence? I think not. It was supposed to be here, and it's very interesting. And we're going to kind of go back and forth a little bit. So let me read what I wrote you, read to you yesterday at the beginning of the message. It starts in verse 17, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, how many is in Christ today? Come on, come on. He is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and look, new things have come. Come on, that's exciting. Everything is from God, who reconciled himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself. Let's get excited. Not counting their trespasses against them. And he committed a message to us of reconciliation. So we are to endeavor in this ministry of reconciliation. Amen? All right. And we stop there. But I want to keep going. It says in verse 20, therefore, what's therefore, therefore? Because we are a new creation, right? We are ambassadors for Christ. Certain that God is appealing through us. Certain that God is appealing through us. We plead on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. He made the one who did not know sin to be sin for us. He made, I'm sorry, I already read that. So that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Now this is very important before we go to John. Because I want to talk to you a little bit about this. You see, last week we talked about this new creation, old and new, the ministry of reconciliation. Our trespasses don't count against us. We know that we've been given this ministry of reconciliation. But in 20 and 21, it goes a little further, and it goes with our study of John, is that because this created life, this new creation life, and this reconciliation, this ministry that we've taken of all this, he puts it under as being an ambassador for Christ. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about our ambassadorship, if you don't mind. And so in order to do that, we need to figure out what an ambassador is and what it does, right? An ambassador is somebody that lives in another country, right? And this is just simple, just throwing this out there. I'm not going to throw out any definitions out of the dictionary out yet today, okay? Lives in another country and speaks on behalf of our head of state, correct? This ambassador, do they make rules themselves? No. All they are to do is pass down the information, correct? Correct. Okay, so they are really, the head of state gives them a message, and all they are to do is to come back and give that to the other head of state or to help broker peace. But they don't make treaties, they just broker peace. Right? All right. 
We understand that that's what an ambassador is. Let me ask you a question. How are we doing as ambassadors of Christ? You see, I want to say something that is kind of bold. I think a lot of times we take on the role of the head of state and we make up our own rules and we try to do it our own way and we're not following the job of the ambassador. The ambassador is to try to broker peace. Isn't that what he's saying? He's saying, hey, we're supposed to be in this ministry of reconciliation and we're supposed to be saying, hey, be reconciled to God. You know what the, the simple dictionary uh, reference or meaning for reconciliation is to become friends. How are we doing? Are we giving opportunity for people to become friends with God? Oh, we're really good about singing the song, I'm a friend of God. But what about our neighbors? What about our kids? Hmm. So let's go to John 5. I want to pick up in verse 19. Remember I ended last week reading this verse? My father is still working, and I am working also, Jesus speaking, right? Okay, so listen to this. Let's read um, 19 through 23, and then we'll, we'll keep going down after that. It says, and Jesus replied to the fact that Jesus, they were trying to kill Jesus all the more because he was breaking the Sabbath law. Remember we talked about the guy being healed? And the guy was, they were so blind by breaking the Sabbath law that they forgot that this guy who had been there for 38 years was actually walking. You know, to me it would be hard to miss, but that's what happened. So because of this, and it happened on the Sabbath and all this stuff, they began to kill Jesus more. Because not only that, but then he called his God Father. Which in their mind was putting him on equal ground with God, which is not what Jesus was doing. He was, he was living a life with God, uh, submitting to God. And he did that throughout his whole ministry, did he not? Right? So it wasn't that he was really putting himself equal with God. He was just saying, he is my father, and they wanted to kill him all the more. So he says, so he replies to this, this thing, and he says, I assure you, the son is not able to do anything on his own, but only what he sees the father doing. For whatever the father does, the son also does these things in the same way. For the father loves the son and shows him mercy. He is uh, mercy. I'm sorry. The father loves the son and shows him everything he is doing. And he will show him greater works than these so that you will be amazed. And just as the father raises the dead and gives them life, so the son also gives life to anyone he wants to. The Father, in fact, judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, so that all people will honor the Son, just as they honor the Father. Anyone who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Amen. Whew. What is Jesus really talking about? He is talking about apprenticeship. Is he not? I mean, if you think about what an apprentice does, it doesn't the apprentice follow the the master around, right? And he learns by what he sees being done, about what he's being told. And sometimes, this and this, a lot of times the apprentice doesn't even get paid very much, do they? A lot of times you do it for free because you're trying to learn something, right? And, and, and so I got to think about this. I'm like, man, Jesus, he is not saying he's equal with God. Oh, no, 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 no. He is talking about, hey, he's my father, but what I'm doing is I'm apprenticing under him. I want to know what the Father knows. I want to do what the Father does. Okay? Now, I'm going to keep going with this. You see, Jesus' example as apprenticeship with the Father is number one, he admits, Jesus admits, newsflash, I can't do anything without the Father. Then he says, he can only do what he sees the Father is doing. I don't know, but that's pretty powerful to me. Now we have to understand that God, our Father, can see now and sees the future and he sees it all played out. And Jesus is watching it. Jesus was watching, he was seeing what was going on. He goes, I can only do what the Father, what I see the Father doing. You see, he was talking about, I, I mean, he says, man, I'm going to do it down to the very detail of what the Father, I'm going to do it the same way my Father does. 
He follows his father's example closely and then what some would say in the very detail. He and the father have no secrets. You see, the love that they have for each other is so strong that they're completely open with one another. And I don't know if you've really, when you've read the scripture about that, you know, I think sometimes we, we, we forget that there's this beautiful relationship between the son and the father. And eventually, we're going to see later on in John, and, we, and, and after John, and that to the Acts, and about how all of a sudden here's the spirit. And they're working in concert with each other. And they're submitting to one another. And they're, and they're looking, I mean, this is just a beautiful relationship that we see taking place. But there's no secrets. They know what, he, what they're doing. And then his father knows that he will even give, Jesus knows that his father's going to give him even greater things. And Jesus said, so that you, and I guarantee you, he's pointing at the Pharisees, that you will be amazed. You see, Jesus is trying, is, is, is following in the Father's footsteps. And when I think about that, I think about our relationship with the Father. 2 Corinthians 5 talks about that it is Christ in us, correct? That we have a relationship with the Father. So in turn, are we not to be apprenticing what Jesus is doing? We are to walk in His footsteps because Jesus is... is, is Realizing that he can do nothing without his father, therefore we can do nothing without the father. Sometimes I think we take the fathership out of our Christian walk. Do you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes we just like, we have Jesus. A man can have Jesus, praise God. We have the Holy Spirit, yes we do. But sometimes we, we slide this father out to the side. Just a little, just in our thinking, Right? We can't do that. Because he is the source. I mean, Jesus went to advocate for us to who? The Father. He, the Father is kind of important, would you not agree? So, so when we look at this, I see this example. So do we realize that we can do nothing without him? Or are we relying on our religious man-made rules in order for us to follow Jesus? But without God, we can't do anything. Do we seek after Jesus, what he's doing, not only now, but into the future? Do we seek to see where Jesus is working and doing? Because if Jesus only can do what the Father sees, that's going to really tell me that I can only do what I see Jesus doing. Which means I have to be looking. You may say, Pastor, I don't know, I look a lot and I see a lot of hardship and I see a lot of, a lot of stuff and I just turn that off. I don't want to see it. But you don't understand in the hardship, in the hard things, in the hard words is where Jesus shows up the best and the most. I got a challenge for you. How many watch the news? How many have given up watching the news? Okay, if you've given up watching the news, I want you to watch the news. Now, just for a day. I know y'all moan, but you'll get it. Listen. Just watch the news. And when you see all the bad things, I've got something to do. Because this is what Jesus... Because see, every bad thing that's on that TV is an opportunity for Jesus to show up if his people are obedient. Amen. So why don't we do this? Instead of getting mad at the news when we're watching it, let's begin to praise God for the news because God's given us opportunities to be his hands and feet. We can only do what we see Jesus doing. Reaching in the lives of others that we may not agree with. Jesus is doing that. Therefore, we need to do that. And then we have to ask ourselves the question, are we following his example to the very detail? Example. Passage of scripture says, love your enemies. And we, we listen to that and we go, oh, yeah, I, I can try. But it says in the next verse, and pray for those who persecute you. We have a hard time with that one. Do we not? Why? Well, because in that has to, I have to admit a few things. 
If I begin to pray for those who persecute me, I have to admit a few things. Number one is that I am being persecuted and that it's a hard thing. But see, in our Western culture, we've, been, we've, we've told people, oh, when you come to Jesus, it's all easy. No. We've got to pray for those who persecute us. But are we falling into the very detail? There's a train. <laughs> then he said, he talks about he didn't have him and God didn't have any secrets, right? Because he can't in this relationship. So let me ask you this question. If we're following and we're trying to look at our being an apprentice, are we trying to hide things from Jesus? Do we have secrets? You, you, you know what they are, right? It's when you're praying and that thing comes into your heart. We call it conviction. Some of us call it the Holy Spirit. And we go, oh no, he doesn't want me to pray about that. <laughs> I'll just maybe shove it aside. Or we're afraid to talk to somebody about our secret. Yeah, we can just tell Jesus, and that's good. But I believe that God said, love God and love others. And we were never intended to walk this life alone without each other. God has put someone in your life that you can share with. It may be a spouse. It may be an elder. It may be a, Sunday, a connection class teacher or a small group leader. Maybe a pastor. But God has given you somebody and until we begin, I mean, the Bible is pretty clear. I wasn't going to go here, but the Bible is pretty clear. If we confess with our mouth, the Lord Jesus is what it says. And sometimes we need to confess, Lord Jesus, I am hiding things from you, and I am not being completely honest and open. Therefore, how can we go to him in prayer, knowing that he... Because our secrets mostly... I'm going to say 95%, and you may disagree with me, but 95% our secrets come around unforgiveness. We're usually hurt in a relationship. That, that's where most of our pain comes in, in our life. And, and, and so we don't want to forgive. So that becomes a thing we keep. And we, we, we keep it over here, but it affects us as we walk through life. Matter of fact, the Bible says, how... Can God forgive if you don't forgive? And then we have all this misunderstanding of what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is not a free pass. Forgiveness is not saying what you did to me is okay. Forgiveness is saying, look, I'm not holding you responsible any longer. Reconciliation does not mean you're buddy, buddy, best friends. Reconciliation means I forgive you. You are not held responsible. But man, I got a boundary because sometimes... My flesh raises up and I want to smack you. Mm. I'm trying to be truthful. So God gave us natural boundaries to put up. Right? So let's try to figure out what things are and what things aren't. So we try to hide things from Jesus. And let me tell you something. Jesus said, God is going to show me greater things. Can I tell you what it also says in Scripture? That you will do greater things. Why? Because we've been given the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is in and amongst us. And He is in between the relationships. And He is over the relationships. And He is empowering us. And He is guiding us. He is the conviction, but He's also the joy. Let me tell you something. We've got to understand that we will do greater things. I was talking about this last week. The problem is we don't walk like we're a new creation. We come to Jesus. And I'm not trying to say this, and I want to be careful. There is, we have to be humble. Right? With one another. I'm not better than anybody else. I'm not smarter than anybody else. But guess what? I am still a child of the King. I have been given sonship rights. I have been given the authority to speak where the battle really lies, which is not against flesh and blood, but it's against the powers and darkness that surround this world. 
I have been given the authority to shut the enemy's mouth. Now, I don't know about you, but when I start thinking about that, I kind of walk a little different. I want a little swag going. You know what I've noticed? When I'm walking that way, and the enemy comes into my life, he's got to flee. Because this strut is worship. It's when I don't walk this way. It's when I buy the lies of the enemy. That I am worthless, that I am no good, that I'm not a leader, that I can't put anything together, that da 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 da. You all know it. It's when I am walking that way that the enemy comes and sweeps my feet from underneath me. I love watching wrestling. Laugh at me all you want, I don't care. <laughs> It is, but I love it. Okay. But I also like watching, watching boxing. I don't know. I'm a guy. I like to see guys beat up on each other, okay? I don't know. It's, it's the thing. That's why I love football so much. You know, I know people are getting concussions, but come on, bring back the helmet with the helmet. Make football good. I know I'm ruthless. I know I'm ruthless. <laughs> but I don't play football. I just watch it. So it's really okay. Anyway. But, but here's the thing. I love it that before a match, before a boxing match or whatever, and they're in their corners, right? And they're just like, they're amped. It even happens in fake wrestling, okay? You know, they're amped. Why? They got a show to do. They got something to do, right? And they're amped, and they're stretching, and they're, they're popping their, you know? That's not show, man. They're trying to get loose. The problem is, is we got a whole bunch of uptight Christians, and so they get their tails kicked all the time. It's time for us to get into the ring with the enemy and loosen up a little bit. Walk with a little swag. Understand, you are a child of God. And then guess what? Kick the enemy in the teeth. Woo! Woo! This is so important. Guess what? Jesus did it. <laughs> I'm not just saying this to get us all encouraged and riled up. I'm trying to be an apprentice of Jesus, and Jesus did it. You think he walked into the temple when they wouldn't let the, the Gentiles have a place to worship? Do you think he walked, walked in moping? Or do you think he walked in and said, I'm going to find something to throw down? Do you think he was weak when he stood in front of the Pharisees? No. He said, you brood of vipers, you whitewashed tombs. Jesus was no wimp. I want to be an apprentice. I want to do what it is. But what are we apprenticing for? I don't know if you caught this in this passage of scripture. But after he talks about doing greater things, what are we apprenticing for? What does it say right there in 21? And just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so the Son also gives life to anyone that he wants to. Oh, Pastor, where are you going with this? I'm going to tell you where I'm going with this. We have been given the authority. God uses us through the power of the Holy Spirit to speak to spiritually dead people. Man, I was talking to a brother who just lost a friend. A friend for a long time. His heart's broken. And he, made it, he said something to me last night that just blew me away. He goes, Maybe I kind of feel what Jesus felt when it came to Lazarus. I was like, oh, talk, come on. <laughs> Don't just give me that. Give me some more. He was talking about, you know, he was a friend of Lazarus. His heart broke. You know, and he had to be delayed to get there, right? You know, because he was doing the Father's business. And so he goes, I'll get there when I get there. Why? Because he knew. He had seen his father take these 12 disciples from a dead life and what they were doing, and he had raised them to walk in spiritual life. And, 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 and so I think, you know, Jesus understood. And, and it's the thing, folks, do we understand that God's will is that all men, all men, all women, all children, all nationalities, 
all people come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That is the will of God. It's in the scripture. I didn't make it up. Because if it was left to me, there was probably some list of people that we would go for. But that's not Jesus. And here's what I'm trying to tell you. It's the will of God. We've been given authority. Let's begin to walk in that. And let's go to our friends that we care about, that we don't know where of. And let's do a little screaming. Let's do a little Lazarus come forth. You know, we can do that. It may be through our story. Our testimony. It may be through something that we've done. You know what? It may be ordering Jesus, happy birthday Jesus cakes in October to get people talking about, what are you doing? <laughs> Whatever it takes, right? Whatever it takes. And he goes in and he begins to talk about this judgment. How Jesus has been given the authority of judgment. We've heard in church it's not our place to judge, right? Because, you know, how can we take this back out of our own life when we've got a log in our other, right? Yeah, we've got to be careful. And I don't think Jesus here is talking about discernment. I think he's talking about the authority. And I'm going to tell you what, I don't know if we'll ever get this authority. Jesus knows the heart. <laughs> At least he knows mine, and he won't let me have that one. <laughs> but he says, and just as the thought, or okay, he raises the dead, and I, I find this interesting. He says, because he talks about raising the dead first, he says, and gives them life, so the son also gives anyone he wants to. Well, if we know that the will of God is in all men, we kind of make that conclusion. Now in 22, it says, the father, in fact, judges no one, but has given all the judgment to the son. So that all people will honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Anyone who's not honor the Son does not honor the Father who saved him. As I look at this and I begin to understand this, I go back to the ambassadorship of what we're supposed to do. The ambassador is just supposed to be trying to be the go-between between the head of state and another party. We are to be the go-between between our head of state, God the Father, and Jesus Christ, who are hurting in our world. And all we can do is love one another. We do need discernment. But if we are following close to Jesus, and we are listening and watching and doing as he does, this automatically takes place. I'm going to tell you this. This is one of the things where so I have a gift of discernment. Yeah, we all do. It's called the Holy Spirit. And church, we got to start using it. But what we do is, what's the difference? I, 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 I'm, this is just something I'm working out in my own head. The difference between discernment and judgment is this. Judgment is me not following Christ closely and using my gift of discernment. But true discernment is I'm walking in the footprints of my rabbi. And I'm doing what he's doing. I'm watching what he's watching. I'm listening. I am just focused in on Jesus. And guess what? Next thing I know, the sermon has already happened and I haven't had to do anything. Do you see the difference? And I think that's where we get into trouble. This is why we aren't as effective as we can be about raising people from spiritual death to spiritual life. Because we're not walking close. We're not apprenticing. You know, we have to apprentice so that we can be the ambassador. Those go hand in hand. You can almost take ambassador and apprentice and put them together because isn't that what the apprentice does? But we get so caught up. Verse 24. I assure you, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life 
He will not come under judgment, but has passed from death. I don't know, but that's just a big deal hat burst. Mm -hmm. To me, it stops me in my tracks. To me, it, 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 question, it makes me question, am I a true ambassador? Have I been okay? Because guess what? I want to be an apprentice the rest of my life. I don't need any kind of payment for what I do when it comes to Jesus. I'm not looking to climb the ladder. You know? I want to stay where the dust of my rabbi is on me. I'm walking so close that it keeps dust on me. My identity, I want to be found in the dust that's on me. It's especially, yeah, that, that, I mean, to me that's so important. But the thing is, is that I want to apprentice so much that when I have the opportunity, I can <coughs> give the opportunity of choice between death and life. The way I talk. The way I love. Yes, I'm going to have to have discernment because there's a lot of things in this world that's just plain the wrong. Wrong. There's so much hate. There's so much poverty. We have more slavery today than we've had in any other point in history. People are dying because of their faith. But guess what? I don't count that as one of the wrong things. I count that as one of the things that I celebrate. Why? Because Jesus promised it would happen. Church, it's terrible? Yes. But guess what? They've been given something that most of us may not ever get a chance to understand. And that's standing up and saying, I choose life even in my death. Amen. You see, it's all how we look at the news. It's those being persecuted, praying for the ones who are persecuting them. Jesus gave us that example. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Watch any of the videos about ISIS, and they are saying, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And it's radically changing the lives of those men. It's amazing. But we here have our heads in the sand because we don't want to really apprentice because if that's what that means, I don't want anything to do with it. And therefore, we don't have the opportunity to give people life or death. You're stuck. I don't know about you, but I desire a church full of ambassadors of Jesus Christ. It says I'm not gonna, I, I'm not gonna give you my man rate rules so you can join the club. I'm gonna give you the love of Jesus so you can experience transformation and newness of life. Amen. Even if I don't agree with you, I'm still going to love you because I wrestle not against flesh and blood. And I have been given the power and the authority to pray you on into heaven. Because <laughs> that's God's will. Yeah, amen. Are we using that or are we not? If we're not, we're not ambassadors. <laughs> Pastor Dean, Pastor Jason, if you could come up and get ready for communion.
So, I asked the band to not be up here for communion today. Because I wanted them to take part in communion, because sometimes they don't. And if you would please, when you see a member of the band, would you give them the love? And thank you for their service. Because they miss some stuff, guys. A lot of times they're up here when I have an altar call and I know God's working, sometimes they feel like they, their responsibility is to stay up. So I just took it upon myself to say, no, you're not playing the last song. You go sit down. I've got a song to play. And it's really the ending of this message, this song. It's about what we're celebrating in his birthday. And how this works is we're going to come together and, and you're going to take communion. I want you to go back to your seat. I'm going to dismiss you. As you go, you're going to have a thing. But I don't want to. Today is a day of celebration. Amen. We just got done celebrating the Jewish festival of Booth, which is God tabernacled with us. Come on. We, this, is the, this is the time to celebrate and get excited. This is what we do. God says yes and do this in remembrance of me. Today I want to do it in, in this way of celebration. But I have this song, and it's kind of weird. And you're going to go, what's this? And it may not be your style. But I want you to listen to the words. Because it's talking about who we serve. We serve a risen Lord. Guess what? He is no longer a baby in the manger, and he is no longer a broken man on the cross. He is alive and well, and he's living within us. It's an 11 minute song. And guess what? We're going to listen to all 11 minutes. <laughs> We're going to celebrate together. 